In this video, I will give you a quick introduction to Google Tag Manager, what it is and why digital marketers and analysts should use it. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania's YouTube channel, where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So you hear people around you and online talking about something called Google Tag Manager. They claim that this will give you a lot of flexibility and control and power when it comes to tracking your website's visitors. But what is Google Tag Manager? What can you do with it? How is it connected to Google Analytics? All of these questions will be answered in this video. By the way, this lesson is the first video in the series that I have created to teach beginners how to get started with Google Tag Manager. So once you complete this video, go to the description below this video and find the link to the next lesson. All right, so let's start. So what is Google Tag Manager? The best way to explain that is to show an example. Here's your company, or maybe that's your client's company, and that company has multiple websites. In order to measure the effectiveness of those websites and how do they contribute to the overall goal of the business, those companies usually use tools like Google Analytics or Google Ads or something else. And that's where you as a marketer or analyst join the game because you will be the one who will be using those tools. And in order to get some data into, let's say, Google Analytics, you need to add tracking codes to those websites. And in the older days, the only way to do that was to ask a developer. And since developers are quite busy and they have their own priorities, tracking codes are somewhere at the end of the list of those priorities. That's why usually it takes days, weeks, sometimes even months to implement those tracking codes for a developer. And that's where Google Tag Manager becomes very useful because in many cases, you can add those tracking codes to the website by yourself. Of course, keep in mind that Google Tag Manager was never meant to replace developers fully and the best results are achieved when you work together with Google Tag Manager and with a developer. But with GTM, there are many cases where you can actually implement tracking codes on your own. And all of that is possible through the interface of Google Tag Manager. So let's take a quick look at the overall idea of how Google Tag Manager works. You have a website and then you install or your developer installs Google Tag Manager on a site. So what you can do right now is to configure Google Tag Manager to keep looking for certain interactions on a page like clicks, conversions, form submissions, something else. And if those interactions occur, Google Tag Manager can be configured to send that particular data to your other tools that you're using. For example, Google Analytics or Google Ads. So in other words, Google Tag Manager is a middleman between your website and other tools. And I'm not talking about just Google products like Google Analytics. You can also send data to platforms like Facebook Pixel, Hotjar, or anything else. So in the older days, this part was controlled by a developer. Now, in many cases, you can do that by yourself with Google Tag Manager. But I would like to emphasize this once again, that you should not try to eliminate developers completely with Google Tag Manager. There will be many cases where you will be able to achieve things on your own, but in some cases you will still have to rely on developers because if you combine developers input with Google Tag Manager and your input, you will achieve the best results. Now let's have a quick overview of Google Tag Manager benefits. First of all, all of the tracking codes are controlled in one place. This is useful and this is convenient because if you want to change something, you know that the codes that you want to change are stored in one place and that is Google Tag Manager's interface. Then you will be less dependent on your IT department. Of course, as I've mentioned before, there will be some cases where developers input is necessary, but in situations like click tracking, form tracking, in most cases, you will be able to achieve things on your own. Then the time to implement those tracking codes is much faster. Because if you had to ask a developer to implement those codes, you had to wait weeks, maybe days, sometimes even months. But in this case, you can launch your tracking codes on the same day. Of course, if you know Google Tag Manager well enough. Google Tag Manager is a very popular platform and that popularity still continues to grow. So what does it mean is that there are many resources and many places where you can learn Google Tag Manager. For example, Analytics Mania is one of them. Google Tag Manager is free. Of course, there is an enterprise version, but that one is needed only for very large companies. And if you are let's say, small or medium business, you can definitely work with the free version because it still is very flexible and powerful. Then there are tag templates. So what does it mean is that in many cases, you will not need to work directly with JavaScript. You can just enter your account ID, maybe some other additional information, and Google Tag Manager will do the rest and will send that information to other tools. So the tool is quite friendly for non-developers, but of course it is not 
as easy to learn as you might think, and there will be definitely a learning curve. Then Google Tag Manager offers auto event tracking functionality. So what does it mean? That you can track certain interactions with the built-in functionality in GTM, like clicks, scrolling, YouTube video interactions, when an element appears on the screen, and so on. If the auto event tracking capabilities do not work in a certain case, then you can find some custom functionalities that are provided by various members in the GTM community. Multiple members of the team can work in Google Tag Manager container at the same time. There are workspaces, there are versions. So for example, if you publish your changes and something goes wrong, you can revert to the previous version. Also, you can limit permissions of your employees or your colleagues or partners or whatever. So if you don't trust someone enough to give them all the permissions in the container, you can limit them just to edit, but not publish, for example. And finally, there is a helpful community. For example, we have a group on Facebook. There's also official Google Tag Manager forum created by Google. There are some chats on Slack. And I mean, there are many places where you can discuss and get help or help others to work with Google Tag Manager. So that was a quick overview of the idea behind Google Tag Manager. Basically, it is a middleman between your website and other tools. If you want to track certain interactions and send data to those tools, you can do that with Google Tag Manager. Google Tag Manager does not replace tools like Analytics or Google Ads. It is just a way to send data from your website to those tools. So in other words, GA and GTM are not competitors. They work best if you combine them together. In further videos, I will show you how to create your first setup, how to make sure that it's working, and how to publish those changes live. So I hope that you have now a better understanding about Google Tag Manager in general. But this is just a first and tiny step in your long journey to learn Google Tag Manager. This lesson is the part one of video series where I teach beginners how to get started with Google Tag Manager. So right now, you should go below the video, click the link, and watch the next lesson. If you found this lesson useful, hit thumbs up below this video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager, consider subscribing. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I will see you in the next video.